Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be looking at atmospheric pressure and wind. Now normally I start these videos with a hand-drawn diagram explaining the formation of some geographical feature. This time however I'm going to be showing you a short animation that you can find on my website. It shows it in 3D and then I will go on to show you the hand-drawn version. The sun's rays are less spread out in equatorial regions than in higher latitude regions. At the equator, Air near the Earth's surface is warmed, it expands, and it begins to rise. As the air rises and moves away from the equator, it cools. At about 30 degrees north or south, the air, now cooler and denser, sinks back to the Earth's surface. Some of the air flows back toward the equator, and some toward the poles. At about 60 degrees, the air flowing toward the poles collides with cold air moving away from the poles. The collision of these two air currents forces air upward, where it moves toward the poles and back toward the mid-latitudes. This pattern of global air circulation gives rise to differences in rainfall at different latitudes. As air rises, it loses its capacity to hold moisture. As a result, rainfall is highest at latitudes where air rises and lowest at latitudes where it sinks. This is why rainforests are found at the equator, evergreen forests at or around 60 degrees north latitude, and deserts at around 30 degrees north and south latitude. Deciduous forests and grasslands thrive in areas with intermediate levels of rainfall. Thus, the uneven heating of the Earth by the sun sets in motion the Earth's global air circulation. This leads to latitudinal differences in heat and moisture, which determine the distribution of the Earth's biomes. Well, my explanation is not going to be particularly different from that one, but uh, it's just going to be my own words and I might point out a few things that you didn't notice the first time round. Uh, over here, it's very good in the diagram to add the atmosphere because that's the part that blocks the air when it moves upwards. And obviously you can see that I've put in the 0, 30, 60 and 90 degrees north and south of the equator because they're the important bands that determine what's going to happen. You can see I've already started to draw the uh, Hadley cell over there and you can see that warm air rises at the equator because of the he concentrated heat. Uh, it hits the top of the atmosphere, gets pushed left and right and sinks at around about 30 degrees north and south of the equator. Then you can see that I have added the wind moves back towards the equator to zero degrees. Now all of this movement back uh, along the surface of the Earth towards the place of low pressure from that of high pressure, it's called wind. Wind tries to balance itself out, or tries to balance out air pressures and always moves from high pressure to low pressure. Now some of that air that uh, descends around the 30 degrees north and south of the equator um, in these areas of high pressure also spreads north um, and south. Now this comes into contact with air that is sinking from the poles in high pressure because it's so cold. And when these two come into collision with each other, they get pushed upwards, as you've seen I've just labelled in the diagram, and they form other areas of low pressure as well. And it rains in those areas too, exactly as it does on the uh, Hadley cell region. And the air um, returns back to the top, uh, completing the cycle, uh, as you can see. Now the, the middle cell, or the two middle cells, are called the Hadley cell, and the cell directly above it and below it is called the ferro cell, and the two cells at the top are called the... Um, polar cell. Thank you very much for watching and have a really great day.